Hello everyone. Welcome to EEEE lab number six. So today's experiment is about the zener diode as a voltage regulator. So we have to understand the working of a zener diode as a voltage regulator. And next we have to calculate the line and node regulation of the zener diode based shunt regulator. So first of all, let us understand what is a zener diode and what it does. So zener diode is a heavily doped semiconductor device and it is designed to operate in the reverse direction. However, it permits the current to flow in either forward or reverse direction, right? Uh, this is the symbol of a zener diode with an anode and a cathode, right? And uh, this is my current versus voltage characteristics for a zener diode. So VF and IF is the forward voltage and the forward current. Forward current is in milliampere's. And in the first quadrant, it is behaving in a similar manner to a silicon PN junction diode. In the reverse characteristics, however, in the third quadrant, uh, VR is the reverse voltage, IR is the reverse current in milliampere's. Both are negative. And uh, after a certain voltage, reverse voltage VZ is crossed. After that, the voltage remains constant and the current keeps on increasing, right? So this voltage over here, after which the voltage remains constant is called as a Zener voltage, right? And before the Zener voltage is reached, there is a small reverse current will flow through the Zener diode and that current is uh, in microamperes. But uh, after the Zener voltage, uh, uh, I mean, the Zener voltage is crossed, the current will start flowing in milliamperes. And uh, we have a range over here, IZ minimum and IZ maximum wherein we have defined this yellow color region. So this yellow color region is my Zener breakdown region and that is a non-destructive region, right? Where VZ, VZ is called as the Zener breakdown voltage. So if you exceed, if the current exceeds the value IZ maximum, it will, you know, damage the Zener diode and Zener diode will no longer behave as a, uh, you know, as a voltage regulator in the reverse direction, right? So now this is the representation uh, let's say that we have a 6.2 volt Zener diode with a 45 milliampere. So this is the current rating of the Zener and we mark VZ in this fashion in the reverse manic, reverse direction, right? And IZ max is the maximum current a Zener diode can withstand and this 45 milliampere means exactly that. So uh, we, we can say that the Zener voltage is 6.2 volt for the Zener diode and IZ maximum value is 45 milliampere. Right. So uh, here, what does it mean in the characteristics? Here it is shown over here. Right. So uh, 6.2 volt is the Zener voltage after which the voltage across the Zener will be almost constant. So that is all about the uh, voltage rating of the Zener diode and the current rating also. Now let's move on to the experiment part. So let's check out the circuit diagram. So we have an unregulated, uh, you know, DC supply V in which can be varied from zero to 14 volts. We in series, we have a resistance RS 220 ohms. Then we have a Zener diode, 5.6 volt Zener diode, which is connected in the reverse direction. And then we connect the load. A load is in the form of a potentiometer of 4.7 kilo ohms. And uh, you know, IL will flow accordingly, whatever the value of load is, right? And it will adjust itself according to the voltage. Now, this is the voltage. So the voltage across the Zener is in parallel to the load. And that is also the, you know, we can write, uh, you know, we can uh, write this voltage anyway after the register, after the potentiometer or before the potentiometer because it's in parallel. So v, v out is basically VL, VL is load voltage and VZ is the Zener voltage. They all mean the same. Now, uh, if you want to implement the circuit in Proteus, we have to do certain uh, you know, you know, we have to add certain things. So, for example, V in cannot be varied uh, on its own. So, we have to connect a potentiometer for it to vary the value of V in. Also, we need to measure the V in voltage. So, we'll require a voltmeter. We have to measure IL. So, we'll require a milliammeter. And again, we want to measure the voltage V out. So, again, we'll require a voltmeter. So, this is the circuit to be implemented in Proteus. So, as you can see, V in is the unregulated DC supply. It's 0 to 14 volts. It can be varied with the help of this 1 kilo ohm potentiometer, right? After that, we connect RS, which is of 220 ohm resistance. And we have a Zener diode connected in the reverse mode, 5.6 volt Zener. And uh, over here, we have a resistor. Uh, we have a potentiometer, in fact, load RL, uh, in the form of 4.7 kilo ohms potentiometer value. Okay. Now we connect here the voltmeter to measure the value of V in. 
we connect a milliammeter over here to measure the value of il and we connect a voltmeter over here to measure the value of v out vl or vz so this is the circuit which we have to implement it in proteus now uh, we'll look into the step wise procedure so we have to design the circuit and connect it at zone over here using proteus so this is the circuit which we have to implement correct and then i'll just go to the procedure we'll come back to the steps again so step number 2 is we have to keep the input voltage v in more than 8 volts and adjust the potentiometer rl such that the load current is 5 milliampere in this process we have to vary v in and note down the output output voltage for line regulation line regulation means input voltage regulation variation so uh, next step is to keep v, v in equal to 10 volt and vary the load uh, rl which is a potentiometer such that il is changed from 0 to 20 milliampere okay in this step we vary the value of il and we note down the value of v out for load regulation in the last step we will plot the graph v out versus v in for line regulation and v out versus il for load regulation so this is in short uh, this is in short the step wise procedure so yeah and observation table will follow it up will will do the line and load regulation separately and we have to set the value of il and set the value of v in respectively so we will do that uh, just now so we'll open the proteus and start implementing this circuit in it so let me just minimize the screen and open the proteus window and minimize that too yeah so both the screens are adjustable i have opened already a new schematic in the proteus so now let's go to pick devices and i can type over here dc voltage okay so your voltage source v source we have to select dc voltage source i'll click on okay so it's been added to the devices next i'll again i'll go to pick devices and i will type i'll require a potentiometer so i'll type over here pot pot so potentiometer i'll scroll down and i'll select pot hg so i'll select pot hg it's been added to the devices again i'll go over here and i'll select a register i'll type over here register and i'll go to 0.6 watt metal film and i'll select the first value see the value of resistance can be changed later then last thing which is left is the zener diode so again i'll go to pick devices and type over here zener so it's a kind of a diode right so i have to scroll down and i have to search for 5.6 volts 45 milliampere zener diode so this is the one okay this is the one actually there are two but we can select any one so uh, 5.6 volts 45 milliampere zener so i have added to the devices and now i have to start uh, building the circuit so first of all i'll start with the dc source so i'll select the dc source from here okay i have the dc source i have the potentiometer and also have the register and also have the zener diode so we'll select the voltage source and drag it onto the schematic like this let me just yeah adjust it so that it's viewable so this is my dc source next i will add the potentiometer so i'll go to pot hg and i'll keep it over here drag it over here right so the potentiometer is added now i can connect them together with the wire from the top side also with the wire okay so the vin and 1 km resistance potentiometer connections are done next we go to the register so we have to add a register over here i'll leave some space because we have to add a milliammeter over here also so here is my register okay this is rs register and then if i move ahead i will be adding a zener diode so here will be my zener diode so remember zener diode we have to rotate it yeah we have rotated it so it is it should be in this way reverse manner right so i'll do the connections now the potentiometer next terminal will be connected to the resistor terminal then this bottom terminal will be connected to the anode terminal of the zener diode and this resistor will be connected to the cathode terminal of the zener diode okay so this much connection is over only thing remaining is to connect the uh, resistor rl so resistor rl is again a potentiometer so i'll leave some space because i have to add a milliammeter also so we have connected a potentiometer over here so we will be joining them yeah 
okay fine so the circuit is more or less complete now we have to add the voltmeter and the milliampere right and we have to select the proper values so let us first select the values of uh, you know input source so i'll right click over here and i'll type over here 14 volts this is my v in so i can rename it as v in okay so v in voltage source value is fixed then the uh, potentiometer value over here is 1 kilo ohm only so i'll keep it as 1 kilo ohm only and then the register value so this register value is rs i can name it as rs and i have to change the value also so this value will become 220 ohm so i have to delete that other value and i'll enter 220 ohms just 220 and click on okay then i'll move on to the zener diode zener diode i can check the properties so i can double click on it and I, as you can see the voltage is uh, 5.6 uh, volt and the nominal current is 45 milliampere right so that is the iz max value so that's okay for me that is what was required uh, then i'll require a potentiometer again at the output which is acting as a load so uh, this there is there is one terminal open so that one terminal open third terminal will be connected to the ground like this okay and i have to change the value to 4.7k so this register value has been changed to i mean potentiometer value rl this is your value rl so this has changed to 4.7 kilo ohms right i have to also add a ground so i'll right click click on place and uh, then i will be clicking on the terminals and from here i will be selecting the ground so i can add the ground over here and i'll make the connections with the wire right so now all the connections are made let me just maximize the screen and then i can drag it uh, in this fashion yeah i hope the entire screen is visible now okay if i can go to view and zoom to area i can maximize this even more yeah so this is my circuit now i have to add a voltmeter over here so for adding the voltmeter i'll go to the generator mode go to the virtual instrument mode sorry and from here i will select a, a dc voltmeter okay so i'll double click on it to add the dc voltmeter over here i'll drag it to the right hand side slightly yeah and i'll connect it a wire so this becomes this will measure my value of v in right now i'll move to the right hand side so here i have to add a milliampere to insert the milliampere we have to delete this wire right and add a dc milliampere yeah here it is and now i'll connect connect it back why because to measure the current we have to put it in series for measuring the voltage we have to keep it in parallel now i'll slightly go this side and i will add the dc voltmeter so dc voltmeter is added i'll connect it yeah so my entire circuit is complete now as you can see let me just slightly minimize it yeah now i'll go to the view zoom to area and i'll select the entire circuit so that that thing is only visible yeah so my circuit is complete uh, let's say that it's it 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 works or no so just by simulation so i am starting the simulation now yeah it's it's working right now correct so right now the milliampere is showing zero uh, i mean it's it's ammeter basically so we have to convert the units to milliampere so i'll stop the simulation i'll pause and stop the simulation then i'll double click on the milliampere here the display range i will select it as milliampere this is very important step many uh, you know uh, students will say that though the reading is coming zero no we have to change the we have to change into milliampere mode okay and then click on okay so now if you simulate the circuit again yeah you are getting some readings maybe it's not making any sense right now but uh, we once we read the procedure we will do it step by step right so right now i will pause the simulation and stop it yeah we'll go back to the one node pdf and we'll see what has to be done okay so i'll look to the observation table of line regulation right so in the line regulation we'll we'll read once again the statement step by step procedure number 2 so we have to keep v in more than 8 volts and adjust rl such that il is 5 milliampere okay 
and vary v in and note down v out value so this is the observation table for line regulation so we have to keep the v in value greater than 8 volts at the start and set the value of il as 5 milliampere so here are all the readings which have been uh, which have been there so note that the readings in the gray color are the sample readings they are not the part of your experiment but here just to demonstrate that it's working we have we are showing this right so first of all let's let's start doing the line regulation so for line regulation let me start the simulation yeah for line regulation this voltmeter is showing me the v in value so v in has to be 8 volts so let me slightly increase i can increase the value of this potentiometer by clicking on this knob okay this is the uh, you know animated uh, potentiometer which i can increase or decrease so i have to select the value as 8 volt so i will gradually increase it will not come exactly 8 but i'll i'll select nearby 8 so yeah it is 8 volt over here and what did we what does it say next after you select the value of v in as 8 volt more than 8 volt uh you select rl you adjust rl such that your il is 5 milliampere okay so for it is more than 8 volt right now we have to adjust the rl so let's decrease it and see no by decreasing it the il value will decrease this is the il this milliampere will measure the value of load current and this voltmeter will measure the value of load voltage or v out value okay so i have to increase the value over here such that it becomes 5 milliampere or close to 5 milliampere so i have to uh, click on this knob okay we can select it as 5.19 doesn't matter because if you select below it is 4.98 and the next value is uh, 5.19 so it's absolutely fine if you select the value of 5.19 so we have kept the il as a constant value uh, you know more important thing is it should be constant so what we have done is we have set the value of il as uh, 5. Point, how much it is 5.19 okay now we will slowly vary the voltage we'll start the reading we have to take the reading from 8 volts now okay so you measure uh, i mean you can write down the reading over here directly so whenever the input is 8 volt uh, current is 5.19 what is the value of the output voltage v out it is 5.61 so what you all will do is you will enter the value of 5.61 over here okay i am not entering it it's your job to enter it uh, whenever you get the you know whenever you perform the experiments you will get the write up wherein you can enter this readings in the table itself right right now i will show you the sample reading at 8.8 volt okay so let me increase it to 8.8 volt close to that so 8.85 so for 8.85 the value of v out is 5.63 okay so i have written over here 5.63 similarly you will gradually increase the input over here by increasing the potentiometer over here right and you have to note down the various readings at 9 volt 10 volt 11 12 okay so let me take one more reading at 12.5 so i will go over here and gradually increase this till it becomes 12.5 okay it has gone beyond that okay 12.3 after 12.3 it's going to 12.7 that's absolutely fine no problem with that so uh, what you can do is at 12.5 uh, rear i'll 12.7 i am getting actually so at 12.7 my what is my output value so my output value is 5.66 as you can see it's uh, visible in the voltmeter so i i have noted this value over here 5.66 then we have to go take the value of uh, output at v in equal to 13 volt okay and i will take the reading at 13.5 a sample reading at 13.5 so let me change it to 13.5 so here it is exactly 13.5 and at 13.5 i will take the reading of the uh, output 5.66 right so i'll note down the voltage v out value 5.66 so at 13.5 volts at 13.5 volts my value of the output is 5.66 and i'll take the last reading at 14 volts so yeah these are the sample readings which you don't have to take which you i mean uh, sample readings uh, need not be as a part of your observation table only the readings which are marked in black we have to note it down okay so in this manner you will complete your line regulation and note down and complete this table after you complete this table you have to plot the graph of v in versus v out okay let me show it to you in the plots so you will take the reading of v in the x axis and v out in the y axis 
it should almost be like a straight line uh, parallel to the x axis almost right so that is what you will observe that the output voltage is remaining constant irrespective of the input variations so that's the line regulation for you okay now let us see how you have to do the load regulation so for load regulation we have to keep v in constant at 10 volt and we have to vary rl such that the il is changed from 0 to 20 milliampere understood what has to be done for load regulation for load regulation we have to keep the line voltage v in as 10 volt and we have to vary rl such that the il is changing from 0 to 20 milliampere okay so uh, for load regulation we'll vary il and note down the value of v out so let's start so these are the load regulation readings available to us right for load regulation we'll set v in equal to 10 volt so for load regulation we'll set v in equal to 10 volt yeah so let's say it's 10.2 it doesn't matter it has to be constant so v in voltage is now right now 10.2 volt and uh, now what we have to do is we need to vary the value of load resistance such that il value we can vary it from 0 to 20 milliampere so actually let us start from bottom okay so uh, again the gray color readings are the sample readings which you don't have to take right you have to only take the readings which are uh, marked over here in the black ink okay so let me start uh, let me adjust the value of rl such that the uh, you know milliampere source 19 milliampere yeah so v in has to be constant don't disturb the potentiometer over here i'll increase the value so that the il value is around 20 milliampere around 19 milliampere basically so i'll keep on increasing it yeah here it is around 19 19.7 or close to 20 right so at 19 what is my output voltage for current uh, il equal to 19 what is my output voltage i have to note it down so output voltage is coming out to be 5.56 so this i will note down in the observation table you have to note it down for 20 now let's change to 17 so i'll adjust the potentiometer now it has become 17 milliamperes for 17 milliamperes what's the output voltage 5.60 so for 17 milliamperes it's 5.60 then i'll slowly reduce the value you have to take the reading at 16 14 12 10 milliamperes i'll take the reading at 9 milliamperes now so i'll go over here i'll reduce it further and i'll select such that it becomes 9 yeah 9.22 it's approximately close so we have to note down the value of uh, v out so v out value is 5.63 now so yeah i have noted down to be 5.63 right now i'll go even low value you have to note down at 8 8 milliampere il value 6 and 4 milliampere i will note down at 3 milliampere because that's the sample reading so i will lower the value of il by adjusting the value of rl to 3 milliampere of current so i can easily adjust this value using this potentiometer so i am reducing it till it becomes 3 milliamperes okay it has become exactly 3 now so the value of the output voltage is 5.65 so that is what i will exactly note down over here i have noted it down then you have to record at 2 milliampere i mean at il equal to 2 milliamperes what's the voltage and at zero so how to take the uh, you know zero reading we will see now so we'll see that if you reduce it further it will fall down to 2 milliamperes also so you can note down the reading at 2 milliamperes okay you can note it down it's 5 point uh, i mean whatever the reading is you can note it down over here now how to check the value of uh, il equal to 0 milliampere so let's see if i can reduce it further and further down so if i reduce it further and further down let's see if it goes to 0 it doesn't goes to 0 milliampere right even if i keep the entire limit of the potentiometer to the 0% level so what we have to do is uh, basically what does this mean is uh, zero current means our load is not connected right no load condition basically so how we will make sure that we'll pause the simulation we'll stop it and pause it what we have to do is we have to disconnect the load so i'll remove this wire from here and now i will check the voltage 
So now you can see the reading is zero milliampere, right? So what's the value of the voltage over here when we don't connect the load? So that means whenever the value over here IL is zero, that means no load is connected. Zero milliampere of current will flow through the load. And what is the voltage at that at that point? So voltage at that point is 5.65. The voltage at that point is 5.65. Okay, right. So this is the voltage I will note it down. I have already told you the value at zero milliampere. How much is the voltage? So you have to note it down in the observation table. So always there is a confusion among the students that uh, you know. Let me connect it back and explain it to you. Ki I want a zero current, right? So why can't I sort this uh, potentiometer? Okay. So what I mean is this. So why can't I do it like this? If I sort this potentiometer, what I will get? What I what will happen? See. If I sort the potentiometer, the output will be zero, of course, because they are connected to a sort, but the current will be maximum. So this is the maximum current. You know, I Z max was 45 milliampere, right? So the short circuit current in a zener diode is 37.8. It can tolerate up till 37.8 milliamperes of current. Okay, that's the meaning. So this is short circuit condition. This is not. Uh, this is not connecting. It is basically we are short circuiting the load. We should never do this. We should never ever do this. That is why this is a wrong technique over here uh, to measure the current at zero milliampere. We have to disconnect the load. Okay, disconnect the load means we will remove this wire and then take the value of the output voltage. So as you can see, now the value, now the current over here is zero milliampere. This condition is called as no load condition. So at no load condition, what is my output voltage? 5.65 and that is what exactly we will note it down okay now let me put the circuit back note that you have to add your name roll number and date of performance and what is the title of the experiment here and you have to take the full print screen so that the date and time is also visible okay and it should be in the working condition like this some value should be visible whenever you take the print screen fine with it so we have completed the entire experiment procedure so after you complete the load regulation, I have noted down all the readings of the output voltage by varying the value of IL by varying the load resistance. Then you will plot this uh, graph of V out versus IL. Now IL will be in milliamperes and V out will be in volts. So expectation is that this also should be a straight line parallel to the x-axis, right? So this will indicate that even if the load changes, if, even if the load current changes, the value of the output voltage is regulated. It's not changing. What do you mean by voltage regulation? Voltage regulation means even if there is a change in the line voltage. Now, why the line voltage will change? Now, remember, we have done an experiment uh, wherein we have done a mobile battery charger, right? So this unregulated DC supply is coming from that, you know, AC to DC conversion only. So basically, a line voltage keeps on changing. So if there are some line voltage fluctuations, my output load should not change. It should be regulated. And that is what we are testing over here. If you see carefully, the value of the output voltage is hardly changing once it crosses the zener voltage. So zener voltage is 5.6. Once it crosses that value, your output voltage will remain almost constant. As you can see, 5.63, 5.66. Hardly there will be a variation. So that is what do you mean by voltage regulation? Similarly, a load regulation. So let's say that we have connected a load. Now, normally we don't connect a resistive load, but let's say that you have connected a bulb. Okay, now bulb is a resistive load. So let's say there are fluctuations of current in that bulb, right? So those fluctuations should not, you know, affect the voltage across it at the output of that, right? So the voltage should remain constant irrespective of the load variation. Let's say that you have a fan at your home and you, you know the regulator, right? What does the regulator do? Regulator will make sure that the fan works at a particular speed. Okay, so it will it will maintain the speed constant. Similarly, over here, the regulation means voltage regulation means it will keep the output voltage constant irrespective of the load changes. So here, what we were doing in the load regulation, we were changing the load current and we were checking whether our circuit is maintaining that voltage. So yeah, we can check it from the readings that. Uh, you know, the output voltage is almost constant irrespective of large variations in the load current. So when the load current was 3 milliampere, the output voltage was 5.65. When it was 17 milliampere, it was 5.6. So there are very small variations in the voltage. 
so we can say that the output voltage is regulated and the load regulation is you know successfully done right so we have to at the last when you complete the reading you have to plot this v out versus v in and v out versus il on the graph paper you can take the help of the excel and plot the graph automatically we have done that before in the maximum power transfer theorem so you can refer that recording for more details how to plot it correct okay fine so now i think that completes this experiment so we will revise what we have done we have done the experiment on zener as a voltage regulator and we have performed the line regulation and the load regulation right so that's all for this experiment and that completes the entire e triple e experiment list okay so thank you all for joining and complete your lab on time so thank you everyone